Stroke changes lives in an instant and there are 1.3 million stroke survivors in the UK. The Stroke Association are here to rebuild lives by offering specialist support, funding vital research and campaigning. Stroke research is vital to find treatments and support for people to survive and rebuild their lives. However, it receives far less funding than other conditions. Just 1.2% of public and charity spend is in stroke. That is £30 million in a year compared to the £483 million dedicated to research into cancer and neoplasm. It's studies that explore the elusive and intricate workings of the brain that lay the foundation for large-scale changes, such as new medications to support recovery of the brain after stroke. It takes significant time and funding to make breakthrough progress. And our charity is proud to have supported stroke research for over 30 years. In this time, deaths caused by stroke have halved. However, the number of stroke survivors that need support is rising. Funding for research holds hope that we can stop stroke happening and treat stroke so that people can live their best lives. My name is Professor Sven Bestman and I'm a neuroscientist who studies movement. Now, everything we do requires movement, but we still lack understanding of how our brain enables us to move so effortlessly through the world. And to shed light on this, we measure activity from the brain and the spinal cord in healthy individuals and in patients, and we use magnetoencephalography when they plan and execute actions. We also manipulate brain activity directly using non-invasive brain stimulation techniques to better understand the importance of these parts of the brain for the control of movement. And we can also change activity in a way that may promote recovery and relearning of movement after brain damage has occurred. Now one might think that we know how our brain controls movement. While we have a fairly good insight, there's also still a large range of unresolved questions. How do humans move so effortlessly and learn so quickly? What happens after damage to the brain and how does the brain change? And why do we see the deficits of movement in individual patients? What happens when our brain recovers from damage and when it relearns movement? Now these are fundamental questions that only basic research can shed light on and without such knowledge we can't develop new better treatment approaches to help patients regain the ability to move. Because humans are so unique in their ability to turn thoughts into actions, we study the human brain in our lab, using brain stimulation and neuroimaging to measure and manipulate the brain during healthy and pathological movement. And this has helped us to develop better approaches for targeting specific brain regions with brain stimulation in order to aid recovery. It also has helped us understand better what the brain is really doing when planning a movement and how it enables us to learn and react so quickly to unexpected changes around us. Basic research requires substantial funding because we will only understand how to repair the brain if we can minutely understand the processes involved and exactly how these have been disrupted by the brain injury. This then provides a solid foundation for the development of new therapeutic approaches, ensuring that they have the very best chance of success so that patients can make the very best recovery. Funding PhD students is a common and effective way of making progress in discovery research because it helps build capacity in key areas. It's an important part of our research strategy. Students like Heyer make an impact in the short term through the research carried out during their PhD but the long-term impact in terms of the future contribution with access to the necessary support makes it an investment for the future too. My name is Heya Akkad and I'm a PhD student at UCL with a background in clinical and cognitive neuroscience. The aim of my PhD is to improve the recovery of speech after stroke. To be able to understand language recovery in stroke survivors, I use brain imaging techniques to characterise the circuits in the brain that support speech production and how these may be affected by stroke. I use this to inform the design of an intervention that can be used to improve speech recovery. The intervention I'm developing uses a form of non-invasive brain stimulation, a painless tool that can promote recovery of the brain after injury. 
I use a particular form of non-invasive brain stimulation known as transcranial alternating current stimulation, or TACS. When applied during a particular behaviour, in this case speech, TACS can interact with the brain's firing pattern and modulate the brain circuits necessary for successful speech production. The intervention I'm developing will be used alongside speech rehabilitation to restore brain function and improve speech recovery. My name's Cathy Price and I'm a Professor of Cognitive Neuroscience at University College London. I specialise in how the human brain supports speech and language. Uh, I lead a project called PLORAS and PLORAS stands for Predicting Language Outcome and Recovery After Stroke. The reason this project is important is that people who have strokes and speech and language difficulties recover in different ways. Some of them recover fast, some of them recover slowly, and some of them have a very limited recovery. And what they want to know is, will I get better? When will I get better? And what do I need to do to speed up that recovery process? Unfortunately, we don't know the answer to any of those questions, but what we do know is that the degree and speed with which somebody recovers their speech and language after stroke depends on which parts of their brain have been damaged. And we also know that there are many different parts of the brain that have been damaged. And strokes can affect all these different regions in different ways. So let me give you an analogy of a car. A car can break down in many different ways and we need a mechanic to tell us which part of it is broken can the mechanic fix it quickly, or does it need to go to the garage for extensive repairs? So just in the same way, what we're trying to do is to understand that in the brain. And we study hundreds of stroke patients who have speech and language difficulties. We, for each one of them, we will look at their brain scan and we'll say which part of their brain has been damaged. And then we study how their speech and language abilities change over time. And that can be over months and very often it can be over years. It continues to, to change. And we learn what is the relationship between the part of the brain that's damaged and the degree of recovery. Once we've learned that, we can then um, ask, you know, can we predict for future patients how they're going to recover in advance before they've actually made the recovery? Um, and, and we then need to test these predictions in new patients because we wouldn't want to give future patients the wrong information. So in summary, um, what I do is try and understand the relationship between the brain and recovery, make predictions and test these predictions. And that's why it takes such a long time. It's inspiring to hear about discovery research that holds hope for great improvements in stroke care. This research carries forward new ideas by testing the boundaries of our understanding of stroke. Without it, there would be no foundations for research to be taken to people affected by stroke in clinics and communities. But this can only happen with sustained funding for research. The Stroke Association want to see more investment in research to prevent and treat stroke. With more people having and surviving stroke, more stroke survivors and their families need research to cope, adapt and rebuild their lives. I hope this documentary has shone a light on the importance of research for the stroke community. Thank you for watching.